Hello and welcome back, Lady Joyful here with a video for Sasayaki Glitter. In today's video I'm going to be making a birthday card using the Baby Ellie Digi Stamp and I'm going to be concentrating on cast plate. Uh, this Digi Stamp has a little handle on the top of the cake and I am colouring um, the elephant as if uh, if the candle is the primary light source for this picture so I am starting by putting down um, yellow in all the places where the light from the candle will be shining onto the elephant so um, just everywhere that is kind of pointed towards the candle I'm no expert on colouring, I just try to do it how I think feels right and um, just kind of, I find the best way to do it is imagine in your head like how, how the different shapes are and how they would interact with the light from a candle. There are a few places that I've not got it right but um, that's kind of the, the point of I think of colouring images again and again is to practice and um, each time look and see where where you've got it right and where you've got it wrong and what can be improved upon the next time. I think it's a learning process. So um, back to the colouring. After getting the yellow down I then started moving on to my shadows so I took my darkest grey and the greys I'm using are Yusu Owl markers um, and the yellows are Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers I just don't have any grey illustrator markers so that's why I'm using the Yusu. So I laid down my shadows um, basically in the opposite areas to the yellow areas using my darkest grey and now I'm going in with my mid-tone um, I will be using three greys in total so this is the middle of the three and I'm using that just to extend out all the grey areas towards the light and just blend it out a bit at a time and it, you can kind of correct as you go if you think something's not quite right you can kind of adjust it a bit so now I have my lightest grey which is drying out a bit so I had to fight with it a bit to blend and I'm just going into all the areas that are still white basically and bring them across into the yellow and even going into the yellow itself a bit to help it blend with the grey here in particular you can see it's very dry and is not cooperating with me. Um, juicy markers are always much better to work with. These markers are not refillable so I will just have to replace them and I probably will get Spectrum Noir this time seeing as that's what I'm using nowadays. So I'm just working along the face and I end up actually switching to use the chisel tip um, because that way I can get a bit more ink down at once and it's quite a large area there anyway on the face so I didn't need the bullet tip necessarily so then I'm just refining some of the areas on the trunk and then I'll move on to colouring the white that's left on the body and the legs and I'm still using the chisel tip because it just seemed to have a little bit more ink than the bullet tip did even though it's the same ink chamber I think the nib was just a bit better. So here I'm just making sure the yellow on the trunk is blended in as much as I want it and on the cheek and um, then I decided the inner ear looked a bit too yellow so I'm taking my lightest grey again and just going over all yellow to um, kind of get back a bit and make it look like um, I suppose that rather than having a yellow ear that the elephant has a grey ear with yellow light being cast on it which is not the same thing of course and then I noticed I hadn't coloured the inner part of the other ear so I'm just going back in with the same three shades of grey 
and I'm leaving a kind of high area, just a lighter area, not a candle lit area along the center just to help give some shape to the air. And here again I'm just refining the the cast light on the elephant. Then I used my lightest grey on the toenails and I added a highlight to the toenails on the front leg using both my yellows. I actually think I should have put a highlight along the other toenails as well but I didn't do that. So here I'm going back in and just brightening up the very edges of all the um, yellow areas, all the cast light just to help it stand out a bit more and at the moment it might be looking a bit weird um, because the elephant's on a white background currently the cast lighting seems odd but it makes more sense when you have it on a dark background so if you're if you're colouring along and if you find find that you're not happy with how it looks just bear with it until you've got it got the background sorted as well. So then I moved on to colouring the elephant's bow and I decided to go with blues for the bow. I have actually made this card before and when I did it before I believe I did um, green for the bow but this time I decided I would go with blue and I only have two shades of blue so um, normally I would prefer to use three shades for my, my shading and instead I'm just kind of doubling over the darkest area with my darker blue to make it as dark as possible. So in a sense you could think that the mid-tone is one layer of the darkest blue and the darkest tone is two layers, although it's not quite literally one and two layers. Anyway, so then I'm moving on to the cake and I'm using some browns for the cake and here you have to bear in mind that the, shad the uh, light is coming directly from the top so most of the shadow will be at the top like directly below the icing and I went with kind of a I guess a mid-tone brown for the cake itself and then the icing will be a very dark chocolatey brown I didn't show all the colouring of the cake because it was basically the same and the video is getting quite long anyway. So then I'm adding a yellow highlight onto the icing which is done in exactly the same way as it was on the elephant, just everywhere that the light would hit. And then I will again go in and add my shadows. And here again I'm using Yusu markers just because they are, um, I do have some brown spectrum masks but these particular shades are more chocolatey which was the look I'm going for so I decided to use them instead. And again I put my darkest colour in first and then my mid-tone and then I will move on to the lightest and I'm slowly working in towards the yellow. And here again on that icing you can see I didn't quite get the yellow perfectly, it should have gone all the way up to the edge on that icing. Um, and I will a bit later when I go back in with my yellow I will kind of draw it over to the edges but it would have worked better if I'd done it right from the start. And this, um, because it has that strong highlight on the icing it does make it nice and shiny looking. And here I'm going back in with the yellow. Um, here you can see I'm trying to get it out to the edges and just strengthening that highlight. Then rather than bringing any other colours in I decided to use the same blues that I had used on the elephant's bow to colour the flowers and uh, other little bits of decorations on the cake. I'm using the darkest blue for those and I will use the lighter blue uh, on the plate. Um, the darkest, well both blues I use to colour in the candle and the heart on the elephant's foot as well but I believe I do that off camera. 
So here now I will move on to colouring the plate with the pearl blue, the lighter blue. And I do add just a touch of yellow either end to highlight it. I also later went in and added some yellow highlights on the elephant's bow. So I'm using a dark brown card base and I've white heat embossed my sentiment onto it and then I'm adding a circle of yellow vellum to go behind the elephant and then I have adhered the elephant down with double sided tape and a little glue pen on the fiddlier areas and that completes my elephant card. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you're not yet a subscriber, you can click the button here to subscribe to both my channel and the Sasayaki Glitter YouTube channel. There's also some other videos that you might find interesting, and if you'd like to leave a comment below, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye!